Hi everyone, Preston here from Preston's Putting, and in this video we're going to take a closer look under the hood at some of the green mapping ideas that I've come up with just to help give people a little bit more framework and be better prepared for when they get out onto the golf course. If you've seen the first video on green mapping, you'll be familiar with some of these lines, such as the contours of the putting green, like the arrows indicating the false front here, or this line running across the middle of the green that represents a crest. And I've just got a couple of arrows on there just to point me in the right direction, so at least when I'm looking at the pin sheet, I have a good idea as to what I can expect when I can get when I get up onto the green. Not all the time do we get the luxury of seeing the whole locations the day before the event or having a good idea as to where they might put the pins, but those general contours and arrows at least give me an idea as to maybe a pin's on top of a shelf or below a ridge, and do I have an option to use a sideboard or backboard on my approach shot. But in this case, our practice round was late in the afternoon and gave us an opportunity to look at some of the whole locations prior to the event the next day. We've marked that with our yellow flag here on the right-hand side. And one of the first things I'm doing once I find that whole location is finding the straight uphill putt marked by the 0% line here at the bottom right portion of the green. In the event that we need to lay up on a par, fo par 4 or par 5 or we have a difficult pitch shot, I at least want to know where's the easiest putt coming from. Then beyond that I'm looking at the numbers that are both hole high left and hole high right. Those are my percent tilts from the left side and the right side and both of those at 4%. I like just having that added confirmation. I'm not using a level for those but I am just feeling it with my feet using the Aimpoint Express system getting a general idea as to where the start line is that gets the ball stopping near the hole probably rolling over that red dot that they've laid out for us already. Then I'm shifting gears from that essential information to the player perspective and where the likely locations where we might be putting from. Given the fact that this is a par 5 that you can see uh, coming in from about roughly 215 yards or so with a bit of a headwind, I'm thinking that we might not be firing at that flag necessarily. So I'm looking at a possible collection area here in the bottom left, just below that ridge. And we hit a few putts from down there, figured that one was playing pretty close to 8 percent. Huge advantage there because if we get up there tournament day, I haven't done my homework on this position right here to that part of the green where we've marked the flag, and I guess it at a 6% because I underestimate that severe side tilt going up the hill a little bit. It's going to leave me a pretty lengthy birdie putt, so I want to try to avoid those situations. And lastly, we have our 6% tilt that we've measured from just above the cup here. In the event that we hit one that gets to the back edge of the green, i just like to know what that downhill putt's going to look like and have a really good handle on how severe that side tilt's going to be. If you run into a situation where you're underestimating side tilt on a downhill putt, those do tend to get away from players pretty quickly. This little bit of added information, again, just ensures I have the easiest possible birdie putt. Maybe I take advantage of the eagle opportunity that I'm looking at. And as we continue here, would love it if you took a look at the next video coming up for the 18th hole that has a little bit of a different scenario that we were facing out there. And again, information that we gathered during the practice round to best handle what we were looking at as far as the approach side of things.